Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the books and resources we are using for our Silk Road main lesson block. This is part of a larger main lesson block that we're doing covering about 2,000 years of history from North Africa all the way to China. So we ended up with a ton of resources so we had to split up this really big unit into lots of little smaller units and in the process of doing so we found that we were covering all these different areas from ancient China to Africa history and different explorers who covered these areas in the world during this time period. So I have a number of resources I want to share with you today as well as how we actually put together our main lesson blocks and unit studies. Now when I'm putting together our main lesson blocks and unit studies I try to find a number of resources in order to create these lessons that are going to be engaging and memorable and one of the things that I like to do is include some cookbooks because we love to head to the kitchen when we're doing our lessons. I also like to have a number of picture books as well as historical fiction. I love to have our projects and hands-on books or hands-on activities. And if we don't have pre-made kits, then I like to have the activity books that can explain how to make some of our projects and hands-on activities. And then of course, I like to add in some games and other things that we can use for our opening activities in order to get into that learning space for our units. Now I do have a lot of resources here that if you wanted to use them as parent or teacher resources to create your lessons, then these books would would work really well. We do have a Waldorf inspired approach. And so the number of books I'm using here typically aren't used in a Waldorf setting. They're used as resources for the teacher to present the lessons, but we do love our living books. And so we do end up reading them aloud quite often. So all of the books that you see here, except for a couple are ones that we have, or we plan to read aloud. So the first book I want to show you is called Father's Road. This is a picture book about the Silk Road and, and travels on the Silk Road. We haven't read this one yet, but I was excited to add this in. Once we started putting together our Silk Road unit, it ended up growing and over the last couple of years, every time I have found a resource that fits in, we have added it in because we've ended up finding that covering the Silk Road means covering so many different cultures and a quite a lengthy time span lots of different regions uh, in uh, Asia and even into Africa and Europe. And so having a, a variety of resources has been really helpful because it has caused us to learn from uh, all the way from Europe and North Africa, all the way through Arabia, India, and into China. I want to share with you Silk Road Gourmet. There were a number of cookbooks that I could choose from for this particular main lesson block and this was not the most beautiful resource. There were some that had gorgeous pictures, super beautiful pictures of the recipes, but I ended up choosing this one and this one goes through different countries. So there are modern countries that were on the Silk Road and I do believe that most of these are either current modern recipes or they are modern versions of historical recipes but this is it's a little bit hard to find authentic historical cookbooks but i think this one is a pretty close uh, it fits the bill pretty closely it, on some occasions we have used some cookbooks that have said they're like for ancient Egypt or ancient Rome and they have included either recipes or ingredients that weren't part of that culture in that time but I think for the most part this is going to be a really good addition there are no uh, color pictures there there was that there are on occasion a few black and white pictures but when it comes to cookbooks I do really love those gorgeous photos in color but we i did go ahead and mark a number of recipes that we want to include for this unit and because this is going to cover areas of the world that we're not used to eating from it's going to take a little while to source some of the ingredients and so it's important for me to to plan ahead for these kinds of lessons when we head to the kitchen because it does take some prep work this is probably not there are a few ingredients that you're probably not going to find at your local grocery store and so planning ahead really kind of adds Adds to the whole experience because if you're if you're just using the things that you're used to using but you're 
you know, you're, you're making a recipe from another part of the world and you're, you're forgetting or you don't have that two or one or two special ingredients, then it's not going to have the same impact in my opinion. Although I have to say that when we head to the kitchen, it's really for the spirit of the, the lesson. It's not to necessarily be historically accurate. These are some of the most memorable experiences my children have had is when we head to the kitchen to do our big feast for that unit. Stories from the Silk Road. I'm really excited to add this one into our unit. I'm a little bit kind of interested to see what kind of stories come about. This is probably similar to maybe folk tales, folklore, fairy tales, legends type of stories. And what I like about adding in these kinds of resources is that you really get to get a glimpse about the beliefs and the culture of a particular people versus when you're looking at the history and you, you find out who the rulers were and the war and what the people ate and how they dressed that gives you like a nice backdrop for it but this really helps you understand the beliefs of the people and understanding that is really important to me when we're doing our historical units so that we have a good relationship with the people and we can really understand or at least attempt to understand who they are what they believed how their day-to-day -day life was and so I'm, I'm excited to add these in we haven't read this yet so I can't tell you much about it quite yet, but we do have review videos for all of our history and all of our units, so you can check back at the end of this unit. All of the the projects that we're doing for these units are in a single playlist, so you can always jump to the end of that playlist and find the review video. The Silk Route, this is 7,000 Miles of History. We have used this book before. We have enjoyed it. It's a really simple, wonderful overview of the different countries and areas and regions that you cover during the Silk Road. The illustrations are really beautiful. I highly recommend this book. I think it's a really great addition. Plus, it's a very simple read. It's not too dense. I think it gives you just enough information to spark interest and maybe dive in a little bit deeper into some of these different regions if you wished. Stories from the Silk Road. This is the same as this one, only a different cover. And I did not realize that when we were purchasing these books. So just be mindful that the, these two books are going to be the same. I'll show you the insides, but the covers are different. So um, when we were buying these, I did not... I did not realize that they were the same because I was looking at the cover and I hadn't, I hadn't looked at the, uh, illustrator and the, uh, the author. So let me just head to page for page so that you can see that they are indeed the same. All right. So we have, we have an extra resource that's the same. Adventures on the Ancient Silk Road. I really, really like this book. It is really well written. So far, we've only read one out of the three chapters that are included in this book. It goes through a couple of different historical figures or explorers, and the writing is so engaging. It's a page turner. What I like about it is a very living resource. It, it, it is, you can read it like you're reading a, a novel, or you can imagine it like a, a thrilling adventure movie. It's so well done. And then included in the narrative are a couple of these captions that give you a little bit more background, a bit more drier information to give you context for what is included in the story. And I like that because it's not too heavy. It's just enough information to give you some ideas about maybe the location or uh, some history around it. So I really, really like this book. I highly recommend it. However, we've only read, I've only read one out of the three chapters that are included here. And I'm just assuming that the rest of the chapters are as good as the first one that we read. So this is definitely a good one to add. Now, when we're doing our units, I like to use our full back sticky post-its. I love these as a tool for lesson planning. I will stick these on the back of a book and I'll write notes about how we want to use this resource or I'll write notes about how we liked the resource and how we used it after we have done so. And so the first time we read this book was back in 2013, 2014, and this was a signed reading from my son who read this book and then wrote narrations in his main lesson book main lesson book and he also drew some illustrations that were drawn from uh inspiration from this book 
So I didn't actually read it the first time around, but I had my notes about how we liked this book or how we use this book. And I will do that again here, where I'll just state that we, we read this book aloud. We really enjoyed it. I found it to be a really captivating read. And that way, when I do our review videos, I have some notes about this because sometimes we forget. <laughs> and also I'll know how to use it again in the future. And also because we're using our educational funding to buy a lot of these resources, it's important that I share with you the ones that really worked for us because it's not feasible. I don't think it's really practical for you to get all of these resources. I would really love for you to get the ones that we really enjoyed that I found to be really captivating and very engaging and well written so that you are not having to spend a lot of time and money to get things that aren't going to work well for you. One thing that didn't work well for us is this book called The Silk Roads. Now I know this is an international bestseller and it is a really big, dense book, but the first thing is that it is absolutely not what I expected it to be. And that is one of the reasons why I really didn't like it is because I was expecting something different. This is basically a world history book that is centered around Asia and the surrounding areas. This is not really travels on the Silk Road, the people that you're going to see, the history at the time time, the, uh, the culture. It is a little bit of that, but that's not the primary purpose of this. This is just an actual world history book. It is extremely dense. In my opinion, I did not like it at all. And there were a few chapters that I did appreciate, but for the most part, I didn't like it at all. And that's not usual. You, usually I can find <laughs> some really positive things to say about most of the books that I've read. I didn't like this book at all. And what, I, and I even wrote some notes in here about the chapters that I really, really didn't like. And uh, some of the things I didn't like is that there is a ton, in my opinion, author bias coming through in this book, a ton. And I really just have a pushback against that quite a bit. The other thing is that I feel that the, a lot of abstract, smaller stories, um, stories or history that doesn't have as many resources or that aren't as verified is maybe what I'm trying to say were included in this book. So maybe not the common popular history, that's okay, but the abstract, res not abstract, but the resources where it's like, well, there might have been one, uh, one resource that talked about this particular historical event, or this is not maybe a well-used reference, but we're going to use this. In my opinion, I'm not a historian, so I can't speak deeply on this, but this is, this is how I felt when I read the book, where there were these, these, uh, antidote, anecdotes that were brought in, these situations that were brought in that seemed really on the fringes of typical history. And I, I, I think that I have not done a good job explaining that. So basically, uh, I didn't like this book. <laughs> uh, what I did like, I did, there were a couple of chapters that I appreciated. I think they were the ones on the gold road and the silver road. So basically, this is called the Silk Roads. And each chapter is a particular road. So they have the slave road, the road to heaven, uh, the road of death and destruction, the road to empire, all of it's, it's a really nice way. It's like a very creative way to talk about history in this way. And this, uh, this area to take a theme and look at how the Silk Road or look at how this region uh, engaged in uh, uh, trade for slaves, trade for uh, gold and silver, uh, how religion was spread along the Silk Road. The idea is super clever and creative for sure. I just didn't really appreciate it. Now, something else is that this is going to go from... I, I don't remember the beginning time period, but definitely something BC, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe a hundred BC. I don't actually remember. I apologize that it, it just, it's from very far back in time all the way up until modern history. And I wasn't expecting that. I definitely don't want to go into modern history. I, I only wanted to get up to maybe the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s at the most. And so a good portion of the book, we read up to, we read up to the road of silver, I believe is where we stopped. And that was not even halfway through the book. 
And granted, this whole section in the back of the book are all the references. So we read um, not quite half the book and then we stopped. So I am, I'm sharing with you how I'm putting together this unit, but also because we have already re read some of the resources, I can actually tell you about this. And really, I don't usually tell you about the books until the review video, but I feel really compelled to tell you about this now. The rest of the, the second half of the book is all from, I believe, about the 15 or 1600s all the way up until the 20th century and maybe even beyond. I, I don't actually remember. I, I'm sorry. And that's not what we were looking for. We were looking for more things on the Silk Road. And uh, so, yeah, I didn't really care for this book, but I did want to share it with you since we did read it. And I kept thinking, oh, the next chapter will be what I want to read. No, no, the next chapter will be what we really want. We kept thinking that we were in the introduction as we read chapter after chapter after chapter. Anyway, this is not a book that I would read again. And, and maybe if I did ever, it would be something assigned reading for high school. Okay, The Silk Road. We love this book. This we this one we have done in the past, and we did it as part of our Middle Ages unit when we were exploring other areas of the world for our Middle Ages unit, which focuses primarily on Europe, and I found that to be a little bit... Uh, uh, just focused on one area of the world when we really should be looking at other areas of the world. So this was the first book that we included in that, and this sparked all of the other stuff that has happened over the last five years where it just, I realized, no, we need something specifically on the Silk Road. Oh, wait a minute. There's all this other history going on in Africa and Asia and Arabia that is not included. We need to focus on that as well. So it really kind of grew out of this book. This is a really well done book. It has great information throughout the chapters, but what's also super awesome about this book is that it comes with some hands-on project ideas. And I love, love, love adding hands-on projects into our main lesson blocks. And so this was a really great resource for that. We made a yurt and the example on how to make it, it's somewhere in here, was super simple and it lasted for years. We also made our own little passport out of some clay. So these were really simple projects without too many additional materials in order to make something that's going to be memorable for your unit. So I do highly recommend this book. We really did enjoy it and we did use it extensively the first time around. So I'm excited to use it again this time and also do some of the other hands-on projects that we loved or some new ones as well. Now there are a lot of kits that I tend to enjoy adding into our main lesson blocks, but I have to say that we did not find too many kits for our Silk Road unit. And so I am stretching a little bit and I'm doing this botanical dye kit. This is from a child's dream. This has all these natural dyes. And I thought this would be a nice addition for our Silk Road since fabric is a really main or a big part of the Silk Road. I don't, I can't say that it was primarily to get silk from China to other areas of the world, but definitely silk was, uh, traded on this, on the silk road, of course, as well as spices on the, uh, the spice road or the spice route, basically through, um, on the, the seas and the, and through boats. But I thought that adding this in might be a, a, a nice hands-on project that we could use. We do have some silk that we can dye. And of course we have other natural materials like cotton and linen that we could use this kit for. So I'm excited to add that in, but we actually don't have a lot of pre-made kits for this unit. We're riding on a caravan, an adventure on the silk road. This is just a, a sweet little short picture book on the Silk Road and what life might be like. And I think this is a really great addition to this unit. I love the illustrations, especially the ones with the map. I like using these as uh, inspiration for our chalk drawings and as well as for our children for their main lesson uh, books. And so this is a nice picture book that that's a great opening activity that you could use in order just to kind of set the stage for the other lessons because it's it's fairly short and it's nice and engaging. Other things that I like to add for our opening activities are games. This one's called 10 Days in Asia. This is a geography game that is a little bit hard to find. So I apologize that I'm sharing something that might not be readily available anymore. These ones have these really nice cards. They are so durable. We've had this for over 15 years and it's still in really good condition. And we play these games often. However, we like to play the 10 days across the USA probably the most, or at least 
I should say that's the one that we've played the most and still the pieces are in, in really good condition. Um, Asia, Africa, and Europe are ones that we have played less. There are, we own four of them and I believe there's also 10 days across South America as well. So if you can find them, I definitely recommend them. The cards come with the different countries. This is a political, uh, political map. So it's not going to be a historical map and it's not going to be a physical map and so while we are doing uh, uh, history this is still going to give us a nice idea of the different regions even if some of these borders have changed over time a lot of the resources that we use will say where a region is and it also tell you the modern day country that you can find that region in so the cards come with the name of the country the square miles the population and the uh capital of that city as well as these uh, t uh, they hold your tiles so these little wooden pieces that hold your tiles it's a really fun game you can play it in maybe less than 10 minutes and so it's a really great opening activity so I definitely like adding that one in I only have a couple more resources I want to share with you that I have shared in other videos on the different history units that we're doing for this time period in this region. This one's on camels. And since camels were definitely an animal that was used often for the caravans and on the trade routes, I did want to add in a resource on it. But there are other animals that were used throughout the different regions of the Silk Road. So I encourage you to add in some uh, other books about animals. I like having a variety of, of approaches for our units. And so I think talking about the animals or the food of the region and, and the time is a really great uh, angle for the main lesson block. I also have this modern day book on Iran. And I thought that we, we might not read the whole thing, but we might read some of the things on maybe the uh the landscape or the foods or some of the more ancient traditions uh and i picked this one up from the library bookstore for probably like a dollar or something and so i it didn't quite fit in to the units that we were doing on the silk road in a way that made the whole book relevant because it's more of like a modern day approach and so i am adding it here but we definitely won't read the whole thing we probably will only read a few pages or a couple of sections in order to add into our units on the silk road and the last thing i want to share with you is something that's going to show up again this is national geographic imperial china this is a 4d puzzle so you have the puzzle but then you also have these pieces that are part of the puzzle that are different historical landmarks you can see the great wall of China here and so I really am excited about adding this in I, I love our hands-on projects and I think this will be a great addition to this unit uh oh I forgot two more items goodness I almost missed these ones this is a uh, historical fiction I love adding in a variety of resources including historical fiction into our units and this will be something that if we had time would have been a read aloud but this is going to end up being something that I assigned to my child to read on his own uh, so I don't usually do assigned reading until about fifth or sixth grade, and he's a voracious reader, so I'm sure he'll read this in no time. And it also, it kind of adds to the whole fabric of our lesson because it, it's something that he can do on his own. He loves to read. Historical fiction is a great way to learn about that time period in context with a great engaging story. So I love adding them in. So this one is something that he will read to himself. One thing I want to share with you that I have never shared before is a media resource. Now we don't use media as part of our education for the most part. If we ever use media, it is part of our entertainment, even if there is an educational quality, quality to it. That's just a personal preference for myself. I know that media can be used educationally. It is a, an amazing tool. Uh, it's just one that we are not going to use just because we are using media in so many other aspects of our life. I'd rather not have it as part of our education. This is the exception that I made because I was just super intrigued by the cover and I thought this would be like a great resource. It is a DVD. <laughs> so you do need to have a DVD player to play it. This is called The Silk Road, A Journey from China to Turkey. And this was absolutely not what I expected. It was a person who is traveling in modern day, uh, modern day China, from modern day China to modern day Turkey. So this is 
this is more of a current view of these different areas and it's it has a little bit of history but it's really more about what the what these places look like today and what the food is like and how the people are like and it's just this person who's who's basically just traveling and who brought a camera along with him and he's it's his experience now it's not what I expected, but in the end, my children loved it. And they loved it because the person, I don't remember the name who is the, the uh, narrator throughout this. We ended up really liking his style in a way that it was humorous. And we, we did poke a little bit of fun, I have to admit, but it ended up being a, a really kind of fun, <laughs> memorable look at modern day the modern day silk road so this is this i can't say that i would recommend it because i don't i don't recommend media as part of education but if you do do media um you might consider looking into this however since we don't use media in our homeschool, I am not well versed in everything that's out there. So this might be a, a really poor resource or it might be an awesome resource. I just don't have enough experience to really share that with you. Okay, so I think that covers everything for this main lesson block. Don't forget to check out the blog post that accompanies this video for more information and links to some of the resources that we've used. That link is down in the description box below. And if you'd like to check out some of the projects we've done for these units, you can tap on the screen right now and check out some of those history playlists. And don't forget, if you want to see how our homeschool is progressing on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.